In this video, we'll look at unit conversions, that is, how to convert a measurement taken in one kind of unit into another kind of unit. For instance, a recipe tells you that you need 1.35 kilograms of flour, but your scales only measure in grams. So you need to work out how many grams are equivalent to 1.35 kilos. Now, you're familiar enough with this kind of conversion that you can probably do it in your head. But let me show you a formal way of doing the conversion so that when, for instance, you're asked to convert milliseconds into weeks, you'll have something to fall back on. I'm going to set this out by writing my quantities as fractions. You'll see why in a second. What I know is the 1.35 kilograms of flour. So I'm going to put that over a denominator of 1 so that its value doesn't change. Now, to change this into grams, I need to know the conversion factor between kilograms and grams. So I know that one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. This is the conversion factor. I can write this as one kilogram over 1,000 grams or as 1,000 grams over one kilogram. Either way, the quantity on the top is exactly the same as the quantity on the bottom. It's just that they're expressed in different units. So I want to apply this conversion factor to my mass. But the thing that sometimes trips people up in these calculations is whether to multiply by a thousand or divide by a thousand. Which way up should the conversion factor go? So here's the trick. You can use the units to guide you. You know that your original mass is in kilograms and you want your final mass to be in grams. So your aim is to arrange the fraction so that the kilograms cancel out. To do this, you need to write this conversion factor with the kilograms on the bottom. Now you know that in fractions, anything that's both on the top and the bottom will cancel out because dividing something by itself just gives you one. So here we can cancel the kilograms out. And you can see now that the only unit left is the grams. Now to do the calculation, we're simply multiplying fractions. So we multiply the numerators together and we multiply the denominators together. And then we divide the numerator by the denominator. And so you see that the answer is 1,350 grams, as you would have predicted. OK, let's do some more examples so that you can get the hang of how this works. Let's convert 456,000 millimetres into kilometres. First, put our known quantity over 1 to make it a fraction. Now, I don't know the conversion factor that directly takes me from millimetres to kilometres off the top of my head, but that's OK because we can do this in two steps. First, let's convert the millimetres into metres. I know there are 1,000 millimetres in a metre, and I want to cancel out the millimetres, so I'm going to put the conversion factor this way around, with the millimetres on the bottom. Then the millimetres cancel, and I'm left with units in metres. Now I just need to convert the metres into kilometres. And I know that there are 1,000 metres in one kilometre, so I'm going to do much the same thing again. Cancel out the metres, and I'm left with kilometres. Now I just have to run through the calculations. I multiply through the top and then the bottom, and then I divide the top by the bottom. Now, I should point out that you can do this in one go on your calculator rather than treating the top and the bottom separately, but there is a trap for the unwary. Let's run through and see what happens if we do this. this is not our answer. What's happened is that the calculator, which follows order of operations, has divided 456,000 by 1,000, but has then multiplied by 1,000, which is really what you instructed it to do. What we want it to do is to divide 456,000 by brackets 1,000 times 1,000. So that's what we need to put in. We use brackets to encapsulate the bottom of the fraction. Always make sure you do this. OK, so let's finish off with a time conversion and ask how many milliseconds are there in six days? Our known quantity is six days, so we start with that. Now, how to get from days to milliseconds? Well, we know how many hours there are in a day, and we know how many minutes there are in an hour, and how many seconds in a minute, and from there, from seconds, we can get to milliseconds. So let's try that out. Pause the video and see if you can set this calculation up to get you from days, six days to milliseconds. When you've done that, unpause the video and I'll show you the answer. 